Rule number one, don't lose money. <laughs> Second rule, never forget the first rule. Big question is this. How are investors like us who weren't born in the silver spoon successfully investing in property to create a passive income and still have a lifestyle now? That is the question. This podcast will give you the answers. I'm George Markowski and welcome to the Positive Property Show. Our mission is to empower 10,000 people to create financial freedom through property using the Markowski method. Join us. Welcome to the show, everyone. George Markowski and Belinda Flaherty coming to you live this Thursday night from the Australian Property Chat. If you can hear us, see us, type in hashtag live. People have already done that. Awesome. And um, we've got an exciting show tonight, and I'm going to be talking about Warren Buffett. I'm going to be talking about Dan Andrews. I'm going to be having a little little uh, rant about him. We've got a lot of questions and answers. You've got a big list of questions, haven't you, Belinda? Heaps. I really like your hair. You look really good today, Belinda. Thank you very much. That's awesome. Uh, someone wrote love instead of live. Thank you very much. That's I love all right. It. We'll take love instead. We'll oh, take it. We'll take it. We'll take it. And, um, yes, yeah, so there's a lot going on at the moment with what's been happening. And um, I'm really looking forward to having a chat tonight. Yeah, bring it on. Well, look, yeah. we missed you last week, Georgie, I must say. I mean, I know that Charmaine and I took on your little live, Ask George Anything. We did um, saying how to deal with naysayers. Yep. Um, so we enjoyed having the little spotlight. But, look, to be quite honest, it's not the same without you, George, I have to yep, say. Yep, yep. Thank you. We missed yes, you. Look, you missed me. Thank you so much. Now, look, um, what I want to talk about tonight is everyone's got their favourite investing rules, right? Yep. And Warren Buffett, he's got two golden rules, which are really good. Rule number one. Hi, everyone. Rule number one, don't lose money. <laughs> Second rule, never forget the first rule. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And look, and yeah. I, I want to reiterate that because it's very important. And seriously, the number one rule is don't do, don't, you know, don't lose any money. And that's one of the things I want to talk to people about because it's a hot market at the moment. It's damn hot and people are going crazy and people are getting confused. And what you've got to do is you've got to just sit back and you need to sit back and just breathe, take it in. Because a lot of people feel FOMO at the moment, Right. Yeah. And even though you feel FOMO, I'm suggesting you take your time, get educated and do it properly and don't jump in too fast, right? Now, you don't want to hang on the hide. I can't even say the word. You don't <laughs> want to hang on the sidelines and do nothing. However, you really want to plan your move, spend your time planning and getting in there. See, regardless of Wall Street telling you you should diversify, from my experience, Going all in on property, on real estate, has been my primary moneymaker for decades. Yeah. I want to show you how to do the same. You know, when people ask me what I'd do to start all over again with no money and no credit, you know what I tell them? I'd what get into saying? real estate. Yeah. Especially right now. The current economy is going to create the greatest real estate opportunities I've ever seen. Literally once-in-a-lifetime opportunities that I'm going to take full advantage of. And you know what? I'm inviting you, freedom fighters, to take advantage of them as well. Woo, freedom you know, fighters. Well. You know, and look, all the stuff that I talk about is based on exactly where the market is right now and where it's heading. You know, yeah. there's not general information you get in a book. There's hard-hitting advice, what's happening right here, right now. Now, I've got a bit of a rant tonight. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to do a bit of a rant. Then we're do going to go to the Q&A. Do you know what, George? We love your rants. Okay, because I'm. Rants, I've got a, your rants are interesting. I've got to be in my bonnet. Something's grinding my gears, and I need to let it out. So, hey, freedom fighters! Hello to all my freedom fighters and guys. If you're listening to the podcast and driving, remember drive safely. Yeah, don't yeah, don't yeah. watch us. Just listen. Yes. So, um, the recent budget has been one of the most property friendly budgets in history. Yes. So if you're a property investor, the national government have done a really good job. It's excellent. However, there's one government in Australia that's really sucky at the moment. When it comes uh, to property. I, could, I, I could take a guess. but And, I and, I, and I'll seriously, I'm going to have a rant. But look, you know, there's a lot of people. Who's a big fan of Dan Andrews? Put, tell me, you know, type in Dan Andrews. If you're a big fan, 
do you love him or hate him? Because, you know, a lot of people think Dan Andrews is a bit of a communist and blah, blah, blah. Well, if you thought he was a communist, I'm here to confirm it for you because he is. <laughs> right? Now, so the Victorian government attempts to hijack the property boom with new taxes. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so, I knew you were going to go on so, to this. So the state, the Victorian government have decided to get all the investors, like seriously, they've decided that they've, you know, Melbourne lost a lot of money because of the pandemic. Yeah. Right? And one thing about Melbourne is the one thing that, you know, you know, 40% of the money that comes into Melbourne, the state government, comes from property. Yeah. Now, there's only so much you can squeeze a lemon. You know what I mean? Yeah, you got that golden goose. You're going to choke it to death and kill it, right? You want to treat it good and feed it and look after it and be have a happy goose, right? Yeah, happy so goose. The thing, the thing is, right, with governments, this is the thing that I don't get, right? You know, someone said uh, no to Dan, no to Dan, yes. So, so basically, you know, it's a bit like this. you got factory farming, right? Yeah. And then you've got the biodomain organic farming where the animals are happy and what animals healthier? Which ones produce more? Happy. 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 Healthy animals, right? Now, you know, as a government, you don't want to get all, all the people that are successful, all your property investors, and squeeze them dry and make them unhappy because Victoria's got the worst land tax in the whole of the country already. That's correct. And South Australia's a close second, right? Because the Liberal Party here... They thought they were Labor and they just decided, what the hell, we're going to do Labor's job. Anyway, I'll, I won't get into rant for that because I'm sticking to Victoria. Yeah, so, anyway, so this is what the state government proposed to do, guys. This is So the government has announced a new windfall gains tax, a premium stamp duty rate and land tax hike to help increase the state's revenue base following the economic shock of the pandemic. Right? So the new tax applies to sudden property value increases of 100000 and maxes out at 50% for properties that increase by more than 500,000 due to rezoning. So let's say you buy a property and you make money really quickly, they're going to take it off you really quickly. Yay. I know, not anymore. Victoria way past this say now, George. Yeah, seriously, I thought South Australia was bad and I was like, I want to leave, I want to leave, I want to move to Bali, but Victoria's worse. <laughs> well, so 1st of July, 2022, they're going to take back, claw back an estimated forty million a year from land, from property owners. Now, wow. you know what this, this is the deal, right? Property owners aren't some rich bastards living in Turak, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. I it's not at all. Right. I don't think it's to do with owner occupied because um, capital gains tax doesn't apply to owner occupied. Only investment properties. So it's only occupied. You're fine. Someone asked if it's owner occupied, but this is the deal, right? Two thirds of property investors are losing money as it is. Yeah. Right. And now a lot more are going to lose money and they're going to be in pain. Now, I've met people in Victoria who've got 10 properties and still losing money because they haven't structured right. They're paying too much land tax and their ego won't let them get rid of their properties and redo it. Yeah, absolutely. So if, I, so if I had a lot of properties in Victoria, I'd be worried right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. But no, but this is the other thing, right? They want to put the land tax up as well now. Even oh, though it's the worst, the worst land tax in the whole country, they want to just make it worse. It's like double dipping, you know. Just so they want to get an extra $380 million a year through land tax hike. So for investors, right? PPR exemption has been removed too, Georgie. You're kidding. Wow, okay. Well, so probably has been removed too. So... Seriously, who needs communist China? You got communist Victoria. It is shocking. Yeah. I'm really shocked. And I'm not happy. You know, Dan, shame on you, Dan. Shame on Dan. Shame, shame, no. shame. No. So this is the deal. For investors, right? You know what's gonna happen? Their land tax costs gonna go up by 19% for properties worth more than 1.8 million. Wow. Right? That's a huge increase. Like the government is also introducing a new premium stamp duty rate for property transactions greater than two million. Now, if you live in Melbourne, you know to get property worth more than two million is not 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 hard. It's easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So, where did you get the info? I'd like to look it up. I'll share. I'll add, I'll get my team to add a link here tomorrow during the day. All right. 
So the premium stamp duty rate for over 2 million, the government expects this to impact fewer than 4%. So what they're saying, all right, industry groups are saying that they're calling an assault on property owners, right? Property already counts for more than 40% of revenue and they want to just smack it even more, right? So this shows fundamental misunderstandings of the real estate market, the contribution it makes to the economy, right? Which is just crazy. So what I've got, all right, I've got a little parable to talk to you about. So I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to read about this parable. No, I can't share the screen, but I'm going to read this parable out anyway. So I don't know if you've heard this about these people going into a bar. Have you heard the story? I don't know, but it sounds like the beginning of a joke. No, it's okay. There's <laughs> 10 men in the bar. I'll tell you the story. If anyone's heard it, let me know. So suppose that every day 10 men go out to a bar and the bill for all 10 men comes to $100. Yep. If they paid their bill the way we pay our taxes, we'd go like this. The first four men would pay nothing. The fifth would pay a dollar. Then the sixth would pay $3. Seventh would pay seven. Eighth would pay 12. Ninth would pay 18. And the 10th man would pay $59, the richest. Right? Yeah. So that's what they decided to do. So 10 men drank the bar every day and seemed quite happy with the arrangement until one day the owner threw them a curve. He said, since you're all such good customers, he said, I'm going to reduce the cost of your daily beer by $20. Drinks for the 10 now cost $80, right? So the group still wanted to pay their bill, right? The way we pay our taxes, the first four men were unaffected because they weren't paying anything anyway. So they'd drink for free. But what about the other six men, the paying customers? How would they divide the $20 windfall so everyone gets a fair share, right? They realized that $20 divided by six is $3.33. But if they subtract that from each of every share, then the fifth man, sixth man would each end up being paid to drink his beer. So the bar owner suggested that it would be fair to reduce each man's bill roughly the same amount. And he proceeded to work out the amounts that each do. So anyway, I went through and, you know, the four fifth man gets, you know, 100% savings, sixth man, 33 and blah, blah, blah. But then each of the six was better off and the first four continued to drink for free. But once outside the restaurant, the men began to compare their savings. And one said, well, I only got a dollar out of 20. And he pointed the 10th man, but he got $10, right? So they weren't happy, right? So anyway, so what happened was, and the poor, the poor, the four poor men goes, well, we didn't get anything out of it. We'd still drink for free. It's not fair. Everything's gained for the rich people, not us. So anyway, the nine men surrounded the 10th and beat him up. <laughs> As you do. The next night, the 10th man didn't show up for drinks. So the nine sat down and had beers without him. But when it came time to pay the bill, they discovered something important. They didn't have enough money between all of them, even for half the bill. All right? So, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, this is how the tax system works. The people who pay the highest tax get the most benefit. Well, the people, the middle class, right? Tax them too much, tax them for being wealthy, and they just may not show up anymore. In fact, they might start drinking overseas where they're a lot more friendly with the tax. <laughs> right? And that's the whole pain. You know, you can't tax a nation into prosperity, period, right? And that's the whole point. And look, I'm not one for the rich. You know, I guys, I really think what we need to do, um, the poor and the middle class, they need to learn what the wealthy do and use their tra tactics, right? And what happens is when government comes in, this is what happens all the time. The super rich at the top pay no tax. And then the people at the bottom pay no tax. But the people in the middle doing all the work, paying all the taxes, pay even more tax. And that just keeps going and going. And it's crazy. Yeah. So, guys, that's my little rant. For Ranty pants. I know you guys are locked down for seven days now in Victoria. So you're a bit locked down. Now, Belinda, you've got a list of questions. So we're going to start doing a bit of Q&A. Oh, are we going to get stuck straight into it? All right. Well, um, look. Yeah, I let's mean, do it. Okay, so my first I've question. My Great. So the first one was, um, look, I, someone just wrote in saying, look, I really want to get started. I've only got a small deposit. Should I save up or should I try and get started now? I don't know what to do. I'm stuck. Yep. Good question. You know what I mean? And that's a valid question. Now, this is the deal. If anyone's done my 14-day challenge, you'll notice there's nine different ways of getting a deposit. And only one of them is using cash in the bank. So there's eight other different ways of doing things. And, you know, this is a similar question. And I get this, you know, let's try to give you an analogy. 
It's a bit yeah. like someone saying, okay, I'm thinking about hiring a cleaner, but my house is not too clean. Do I Should I clean my house, get it tidy, organise for the next six months and then get a cleaner? Yeah. Do I clean before the cleaner? No, don't clean before the cleaner. Or if you're going to the dentist, should you start the root canal at home and then get the dentist to finish it off? <laughs> That's a good one. I Would like you do that? One. Before you go to the mechanic, do you change your oil and then let him do the rest? Or do you get the mechanic to do everything? So I don't know about you, but me personally, if I tried to do my own car, car it's a Porsche. So the engine is like so full that you can't even move. And apparently yeah. you've got to pull the engine out for everything you do with that thing. That's why it cost me a fortune. Yeah. But if I tried to do half the job and then gave it to the Porsche mechanics the rest of the job, they'd laugh at me. And yeah. I'd probably do more harm than good. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. That's the fact of it because they're the experts. Now, we're the property experts. And so if you want to do half your – do your property or save up for deposit or do anything property-wise before you get a property expert in, that's the same as trying to, you know, do your portion, then do it. So, no, you shouldn't be doing it unless you're a property expert yourself and you made lots of money in property. You shouldn't be doing it. You should get an expert in, get a coach in, sooner the better. Yes, yeah, so start straight away. Yeah. I mean, let's say, for example, you know, if you were going to um, – get you know the best personal trainer in the world right would you wait six months and do your own program or would you just get the personal trainer in what would you do your own program i mean my, my brother-in-law my brother-in-law bought the x x33 this new work workout thing and broke his wrist doing it his own wow i thought he was doing something else but it was actually the exercise <laughs> so look right. this, this is the suggestion i do don't try to do yourself part of the job that an expert should be doing better for you. You know, if you got my Porsche and you did the service on it before. So let's say, for example, seriously, if I tried to service my Porsche my own, I would probably do more damage, a lot more damage. It cost me a lot more. And they wouldn't be happy. They wouldn't go, oh, good on you, George, for starting and doing the service yourself. They'd be saying, you idiot. Now it's going to take us extra time. We're going to fix all the stuff that you stuffed up. You don't know what you're doing. That's not a wrench. It's a screwdriver. What are you doing, right? <laughs> so I, I, I let the experts do the expert stuff. Yeah, perfect. That's a really great. Uh, and look, I know even just from a coaching perspective, we get a lot of people with um, existing properties and we've got to do some housekeeping before we can even get started on their investments. Look, you know what? The funny thing is many people that start our program, you know, we save them Twenty-five to $50,000 a year in their first hour. Now, if you wait six months, it's going to cost you twenty grand, fifteen grand. anyway. It's crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Well, that's good. That's a great one. Now, um, I've got another question that's come through. Yeah. Um, um, is it best, if I want to get involved in investing, can I start with the first home buyer's grant to get my first investment property? Yeah, look, now... This has come up a couple of times, but we haven't done it on this live. So. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, look, the thing is, that's an interesting question, and usually the case is no, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen and just show you something. Beautiful. Okay, because I like sharing my screen. And I'm going to share my screen and show everyone something. I'm going to show you a spork. A spork? Look at this up on the screen. See that thing there? Yep. It's called a gourmet spork. Now, you can see it's got a few little things at the end, right? And for people listening, I'm talking about, you know, when you go to an Asian takeaway and you've got that plastic thing, and look, at the end, it's got little fork things, and it's half a spoon, half a fork. It makes a really bad fork and a really bad spoon. And so if you want the first homeowner's grant, you should be using that to buy your first home, Right? Now, a lot of people think, okay, I'm going to be smart. And what I'm going to do is get the first homeowner's grant, but then I'm going to move out and I'm going to use it as investment property. It doesn't work that way. That way. One, the government's not stupid. And two, it's unethical, for one, because it's not really what it's meant for. The first homeowner's grant is there to help people get their first home. And I really think if you're going to use it, you should use it for that purpose. And I think trying to do the wrong thing and trying to be clever doesn't work and it's not really going to, not going to be good for you. So if you want an investment property... You should get an investment property. Yeah. And you should get one that's really good. If you want a fork, get a fork, right? If you're eating a soup, 
there's no point having a fork or a knife. You need a spoon. So it's a bit like saying, you know, George, I want a soup. I want to eat a soup, but I want to eat it with a fork. I'm like, you can't. You can, but it's going to be shit. <laughs> so don't eat a soup with a fork. Use a spoon. Perfect. There you go. All right, that answers that one. That's great. No, because what's going to happen is if you do the numbers, because it's all about numbers. When you invest in property, it's about how much money you're going to make. Would you agree? Correct. There's only two things that are important. Number one, is it going to be in a high growth area, top 100 suburb? Number two, does the cash flow calculator work? Is it going to? Is it, can I afford it? Well, with the first time as a grant, it's going to be too expensive. It's going to cost you a lot more. It's going to cost five, six hundred dollars a week instead of twenty dollars a week. Can you afford five, six hundred dollars a week on a house that's not ideal just to get twenty grand or thirty grand from the government, when instead you can just pay twenty grand, th 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 10, twenty or thirty dollars per week, and actually get a house that's going to double next ten years? Do it yeah, properly. Yep. Yeah. So doing things half-assed doesn't work. You know, you've got to do it full-assed. Yeah. I really think that sometimes when people hear the first home buyers grant, they think, wow, you know, 20, 30 grand extra yeah, you know, thrown yeah. in. And it's kind of that, it's it is that kind of thinking get rich quick mentality. Yeah, like, it is. It, the problem with the first homeowners, right? It's gonna destroy your depreciation, destroy your cash flow. And also um what's gonna happen is you're not gonna you're gonna you're not gonna benefit. You're not gonna get the benefit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so should we keep going? That was great. Yeah, Very much that. Okay, so um, okay, another one was saying, got a home, needs to renovate. However, it's got a little bit of cash, right? And what they were thinking was they want to renovate and then use the equity to get their first investment property. However, the renovation is going to take a while and they obviously hearing the media hype, and so now they're kind of sitting back thinking, should I get an investment property first or should I renovate first? If I renovate first, I'm going to get more equity. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, good question. I've got a bit of cash as well. Yeah. So what do Great I do? Question. Okay, let me explain this one. This is really good. Okay, so this is the deal, right? At the moment, we're having one of Australia's biggest property booms in Australia's history, right? This is going to create more millionaires than any other property boom has in the past. Yep. And I'm being and I'm being dead serious. I I'm telling you for a fact. You can quote me on this. In a year's time, in two years' time, we're going to create more millionaires out of this property boom than any other property boom in history in Australia. Yeah. Right. And you can quote me on that because I've been quoted many times. I get it right because I know my shit. Now the fact of it is, the fact of it is that you need to get into the market in a timely manner. I never say rush because rushing is bad. You want to get everything right, but you want to get in the market quicker. So what I would do is I'd get my equity out. And, and what I do is I talk about this in the 14 Day Challenge on how to create more equity without actually spending any money. Yep. Right? There's lots of different ways you can do it. You can actually do it with a little bit of research, a bit of work. You can add extra equity because you get a better valuation on your property. So I suggest you look at um, how to increase your equity and get a better valuation in the 14 Day Challenge. Two, what I'll do is use the equity, buy a property now, and then start renovating and then getting more value out of it and then investing again. Absolutely. Right? Like the best of both yeah. worlds. So, so what you're saying is, you know, it's a bit like the old bull and the young bull. The, you know, the young bull saying, should I rush down or should I wait up on the hill? And the old bull saying, no, waltz down and get all the, all the cows. And I'm saying that's what you should do. You should really take your time and not get – not rush in and do the do the develop do the um what do you call it renovation but get a property now renovate get another property and keep going and then by then the property you bought is going to go up and then you can start going and multiplying because the more properties you got going up the better yeah i mean the other side of the coin would be this george would be the fact that if they did decide to stop and renovate and let's say they get an extra 50 grand of equity in their home the market's going up yeah so exactly. So don't need to renovate just yet. Anyway. So let that, way you need to. let that renovation be a bit of a slow burn, but get your foot in the door now. Belinda, you know what? You know your stuff. Whoever taught you about property must be damn good. <laughs> I love it. Now someone said I had a very well, good coach. Yep. Someone said, um, great time to do the 14 day freedom through property challenge while I'm in lockdown. Yes. Best to level up mindset and property education. Brilliant idea. It's excellent. Now, what I'm going to do, guys, if you remind me, 
um, I'm going to actually give you guys a lockdown special tonight. Wow. Okay? Right. We're calling the lockdown special. Everyone doing the 14 day challenge. I mean, I'm giving 100% money back guarantee already. Yep. And I'm also giving do the program and don't pay until you're happy. Yep. But I'm doing something even better than that now. I'm going to be doing a special deal. I'm going to be sending a personalized copy of my limited edition book, Freedom Through Property, to every single person that signs up for this challenge tonight. Oh, that's that's awesome. That's very yeah. generous. That's yeah, so if you type in 14 day lockdown, uh, hashtag lockdown special, special. I'll, I'll get my team to message you and you're going to get my book sent to you straight away. I'm talking express post tomorrow. I'll send it to you and I'll sign it. I hope you don't get a full risk from signing too many books. I don't mind. It doesn't matter. So yeah, absolutely. The hashtag lockdown special. Okay, let's keep going. And you know what? If anyone's in Victoria and we're about to go through, yes, the seven days, this is the perfect time. Actually, thinking about it, George, if you remember going back when Melbourne went into the full seven months, we created a lot of new members and got them onto property and they did exactly that. They did the 14-day challenge masterclass, you know. Yep. Look, and That's someone amazing. just said that book changed my partner's life and mindset. Oh, perfect. No, it's beautiful. I'm very grateful that, that it happened. It's awesome. Great. Awesome. Awesome. And this is great. Absolute gold. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Beautiful. So. So I keep going. Let's do this. Let's you, do you, come up, you got the best questions, Belinda. I love it. <laughs> okay. So I um, had a question regarding I'm thinking of buying in Port Macquarie. I found a beautiful old established house. It's around the 580, 580K mark. Um, I live around the corner, so it's in my kind of zone. Um, should I buy it as an investment property? Yeah, look, this is the deal. This is what I've got to say about that. One, you shouldn't be buying properties near each other, especially if they're not in a capital city, yeah. right? So Port Macquarie at the moment, just so people know, is northern New South Wales, beautiful little town. And, right. actually, right. at, and at, at the moment, there's actually quite a bit of activity in that sort of area and they're going up in value, right? Yes. They've had a bit of, they have had a bit of increase. There has been movement. Yeah. And look, and a lot of places in Australia, that's happening at the moment, Right as a broad term. However, you've got to stick to the fundamentals. And until you've got 10 properties in capital cities and large regional centres, don't speculate and go in this little part, little ones. So I suggest what you've got to do is really, one, spread yourself around Australia in the capital cities first. Don't get large it. regional centres, get your, get your um, foundations right before you start going into country towns. Nothing wrong with country towns. It's a bit of speculative. and But, you know, if you look at the long-term growth, you stick to the capital cities. But didn't, didn't you buy older properties in the early days? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, one, about the properties, about the properties. Older properties. Yep. Didn't you but, buy them and renovate them and stuff like that? Did that work for you? No, it didn't work for me. Okay. So, let, let me explain the other thing, which we, we just talk about area one, right? So, one – Probably not the right area. Two, price range. That price range is very high. 580. Carry, right? Yeah. The wrong price range because you want to go below the median price in that area. Right? You've got to look at the median price and you've got to look at neighbour price balancing. So if I buy a property for 580, I want my neighbours to be 680. Yeah. Not 480. Right? Yeah. So that's another thing. That's a challenge. Let me keep going. Yeah, please. you're not going to get you're not going to get depreciation on a secondhand property. That's right. Therefore, your cash flow is screwed, right? So the challenge is, um, unless you know, you, unless you've got lots of cash to spend, because it's going to cost you five, four hundred, four five hundred bucks that that property extra, right? Yeah. Just not looking at the top of my head. Now, I would rather get ten properties at fifty dollars each, or ten properties making me fifty dollars or cost me fifty. Than one that cost me five hundred. Yeah, that's right. Because one that cost you five hundred—that's just stupid. In this market at the moment, yeah, you know, this is not the market for that. Yeah. There's a time and place for that strategy. This is not the time and place. I'm talking right now. What's happening at the moment? I would not do that at all. No way. So, it's a no for me for the type of property, 
the price range, the area, the lack of tax deductions, yeah. all of that, right? And it's probably not the top 100. And the thing is, once, once, um, see, at the moment we're going for a boom, but once the borders open nationally, Australia, not uh, internationally, then the, our, our areas like Port Macquarie and places like that are going to slow down. Yeah, they will. And you know what's going to speed up? Because people are going to go start going overseas again. So they're going to slow down. So at the moment, we had a bit of a rush because no one can go anywhere. But once we open up the borders internationally, guess what's going to happen to the capital cities? They're going to have their second rush. Boomy boom. Boom again. So Boomy we're going for a boom now. But you know what? Let's experience another two booms on top of that boom if you do it right. Yeah, right. Like imagine getting three booms in a row. And that's what we can do in a capital city at the moment. Yeah. Because we've got the post-COVID boom, the undersupply boom, the inflation boom, and the returning boom. So there's four little mini booms coming along. Yep. And what I like to do is I call this called, it's a, it's a theory called boom stacking, right? Fantastic. I haven't so heard what I, what, Yeah, so what I like to do is I like, this, to, I like this. So what I like to do is I like to stack one boom on top of the next. And if you can get it right, the timing, it's almost like, um, you know, you know the Space Shuttle? Yes. How you got the space shuttle and you've got two booster rockets and then a big rocket. Mm -hmm. right? They've got two stages. So you got the booster rockets, they fall off. Then you've got the main rocket, that falls off. And then you've got the third rocket. Yeah, you yeah. need all four rockets to get it to the moon or up after the right. station. Right. But see, we don't rely on one rocket to get you up there. You need the different stages. And this is like a, and that's why this is um, the boom cycle, right? Yeah. So, it's, like, it's like boom, 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 boom. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So by boom stacking, what you're doing, it's like you're putting rocket fuel below your property investing and going up. So I'm looking at demographics. I'm looking at what's happening in the marketplace and what I'm doing when I'm buying a property. I'm not looking at just one thing, you know, like Port Macquarie, one, there's one thing going for it. That's it. Yeah, right? that's right. I, I want to go somewhere where I've got, someone's got a little boom sound. Ah. You know, <laughs> what I want to do is I want to go to an area where I'm going to, you know, benefit from the COVID, post-COVID thing. I'm going to benefit from inflation. I'm going to benefit from all these different things, different at a time. So keep pushing the property price up over and over again for like five years straight. Yeah. That's a nice run. I don't want one or two years of growth. I'm not interested. You know, I would rather get my timing right and get those booms just perfect and just going through. Yeah. And seriously, like if you do it right at the moment, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be the biggest yeah. boom. So it's not really one boom I'm talking about. It's four combined, overlapping. <laughs> However, many properties will only experience, some will experience none of this, and some will only experience one or two. And what yeah. I want to do is I want to get ones that cross section where they're all four of them overlap. Yep. One at a time. So one of them, once one boom stops, the other one kicks in and keeps pushing you up. How amazing is that? Awesome. That's fantastic. Well, I really enjoyed that little question that went to a tangent. I'm we very went. Happy to, I? <laughs> I love it. It's fantastic. I thought I was passionate. Then I hang out with you, and I realised we're very similar. Awesome. Love it. Oh, look, this is my favourite night of the week. Now, this is the thing, guys. If you like watching our show, next week I've got a big show on. I've oh, actually really? got. I've actually got um, a massive builder. This guy was a builder for over twenty years. Wow. And I've been talking to him for a while. And I'm finally getting the insider scoop on what's really happening behind the scenes. Ooh, we like a little bit of behind the scenes. Yeah, so this, this is – we're going to expose a lot of stuff that's happening at the moment. Ooh, expose. No, what? seriously. There's there's actually – there's a lot of um, builders what? out there, a lot of builders out there that are unethical. Yeah. Right? And, I'm look, I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, but I'm going to, I'm going to let it out because, you know, part of our goals are to be authentic. So I'm going to let it out. I'm going to be exposing – I'm only exposing some of the tricks and things they do. So I'm going to show you how next week, I'm going to be showing you the difference between an apple and a lemon. Yeah, beautiful. A lot of properties are lemons, right? A lot yeah. of properties are lemons. And a lot of people don't get this. They really think, you know, they get sucked in by, you know, real estate porn on realestate.com and domain. And these builders, they put these ads, fake ads in there. They suck you in and then they just start charging you and really... It's crazy. And you know what? I yes. don't like what happens to a lot of younger people that buy off these people. Yep. It's unethical. It's not right. I'm going to expose them. And yes. I'm, going to, I'm going to arm you guys Let's with information. I'm going to arm you guys with information from an insider. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Who actually did it. And look, he didn't want to become public. He didn't want to go public. 
Oh. But he's finally going public. And he right. knows a lot of builders. Yep. Right? He knows a lot of builders. And you know what? This is the part about it, though, guys. If you are, understand, you gonna, are you going to blank out his face? No, 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 no. He's happy to go on. Oh, um, I'm, I'm, what I'm, what I'm going to do, guys, is give you the information. You arm yourself so that way it can't happen to you. All right, beautiful. Well, that's very exciting for next week. Should we keep going? I've got one last question, and that's going to probably end up taking us to time. Okay. All right. So. Um, this is another question that's come through. So I've, I've gone out, obviously not me, I'm talking from, I've gone out and bought a property, I've lost money, I'm negatively geared. Yeah. I've reached out to get a coach. I know that that's possibly the best thing for me. However, my partner's pretty much turned around and said, well, you've already made a mistake, can't make you make another one. Let's just sit on it and let's just, Deal with it. Yeah, look, this is difficult, you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, I really believe you need to be, you and your partner need to be on the same page when you're investing. Max makes, makes it easier. Funny enough, we're getting a lot of women joining our program that are saying, forget my partner, <laughs> we're doing it anyway. Yeah. Now, I really feel like that. Can I just add there? Can I just add? I've yeah. had so, I feel like in the last three years, the real drivers behind people in uh, families in property has been the women. It has been, it has been. Prior to that, it was the men. Men, you know, like finding properties. But the prop, the challenge I found with men in the past, most of them buying in their own backyard and they were just buying willy nilly and just. And the thing was, they were losing money. And then I think that I've seen this shift with women because they've been watching their husbands buy property and doing it wrong. So they've actually gone, instead of going, well, excuse the expression, this is shit, they've actually gone and done their own research so yeah. they can educate their husband, but then they're still set in the ways. Look, you know what I, I mean? find women, are, you know, I don't want to be sexist because when I, when I talk about women or men, it's a generalisation, all generalisations are false because obviously there's exceptions in all things. And, I, and I'm, I'm colourblind to sex, race and sexuality. Yep. Because I believe in diversity. So just saying that first before anyone attacks me for being a chauvinist. <laughs> but women are normally a bit more cautious, do a bit more study. And that's why we find we're getting a lot more women coming to our program because they've yep. done the research. I really think that this person's partner is talking out of fear. Yes, he is. Right? He's talking out of fear. See, how do I know there was a woman that wanted to do the program and a guy didn't want to? I know, I know. I, I, I can I'm testing you out, Georgie. I, I can tell. I can tell. Straight away. Yep. And basically, he's, he's, he's going out of fear. And at the end of the day, you know, I think it, the only thing that combat fear is education. Right? Because people fear the unknown. They fear losing money and everything else like that. And and you know what? Yeah. It's 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 normal to be fearful of getting out of your comfort zone. It's normal to be fearful of investing in property or getting a coach, right? Getting a coach is one of the hardest things you can ever do. You know why? You've got to let go of your ego, right? But it is the best thing you can ever do. I, I, I spend a lot of money on coaches. And part of the reason I've spent over 250000 on coaches is so you don't have to, you know what I mean? Yeah. But the thing is, I really think one of the best things to do is get them on the 14 day challenge. Well, yeah, absolutely. Because absolutely. because what they need to do is do the 14 day challenge with their partner. Because I've noticed, and the reason I invented the 40 day challenge was when COVID came out. We yeah, well, this, we went into the first lockdown. Yeah. And I thought, you know what, I wanted to give a lot of value. Now, our 14 day challenge is only $97, but it's seriously $6,000 worth of value. And I'll give a 100% money back guarantee on this challenge because, you know, if you're not happy, you know, and some people ask their money back and I've given their money back. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But I really believe that, you know, the one thing you owe yourself is to do the 14-day challenge, pony up the $97, right? Do the 14-day challenge. And if it's not the best challenge, property, in, um, investing information you've had in your life, then ask your money back because we don't deserve your money if you don't think it's the best thing ever. Yeah. But if it is the best thing, then that's going to give you the confidence to go forward and do what you need to do and create your million-dollar game plan. But seriously, 
you can't force someone to do something. And no. I'm against that, but you, I think you can educate them and let them make up their own mind. And that's why we did the 14 day challenge. If people aren't sure about our program, they can they can test drive it. You can test yeah. drive our program for 14 days and test drive it as much as you want. You get all the information. Look, just about, just about everything I teach is in there anyway. Yeah. Right? And I, if you're really serious about it, you know, you have to, I mean, if you, if, I mean, George, we, we worked in the motor industry. How many people want to go for a test drive? Yeah, exactly. And ah. the thing is like, you know, a lot of, you know, some people might be going on oh, $97 sounds expensive. But look, properties changed my life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Seriously, it's going to change yours. See, this is the thing. Let me, let me be honest, raw, and authentic with you. Everything you've learnt about money and property is wrong. Mm. Let me repeat that for you. Everything you've learnt is wrong. You know, yeah. you know, um, saving up, buying, um, buying the wrong house, trying to retire. Everything there you've learnt. Everything. Yeah, you've well, learnt massive, about- massive mortgage, spending your whole life trying to. Yeah. S- so everything, everything you know about money and everything you think you know about money is actually holding you to prison and keeping you locked up, right? Now, seriously, I, I know the key. I know how to get out of this, and I'm going to teach you how to be rich. I'm going to teach you what the wealthy know that the, in, the average investors, the mediocre investors don't have, right? Yep. If you do what the wealthy do, you too will be rich and do what you need to do. Seriously. Look, I, yeah. I really, it really comes down to a system, a strategy, education. Look, you know what? This- money, is it money, money, and investing is a game. And you know what? I'm going to teach you how to win because I've, I've won that game. I'm going to teach you how to win. So if anyone wants to do the lockdown special, put in hashtag lockdown special. Lockdown. Woohoo. Wasn't there a song, lockdown song or something? <laughs> <laughs> I get locked down. Yeah. I get up again. Dan Andrews ain't gonna keep me down. Get locked down. So look, guys. Um, at the end of the day, thank you so much for for joining us tonight. It's been excellent. It's been a great night. Yeah, now actually- next next Thursday, we've got a property expert coming in, and he's going to tell us the inside scoop. Then the week after, I've got a expert on inflation. Ooh. Um, on inflation, yes. cryptocurrency. Um, this guy was actually a financial advisor and um, he's a very interesting guy. He's fascinating. So we've got quite a few guests coming on the next few, next few weeks. Ooh, we coming. like guests. We yep. like So guests. guys, freedom fighters out there, what's the difference between your book and the 40-day challenge? Okay. Oh. My book, okay, my book is great to read. It's motivating. It's going to help you. It's excellent. The 40-day challenge is seriously, it's um going to give you every lesson you need for, you know, should I bring it up to put in that challenge? Oh, if you want to. I share my screen. I'm going to show sure. you guys behind the screen. Behind hey, the we're screen. all about being authentic. authentic. Yeah, let me jump so, in. Let me log in. Let's have a little visual. I'm a high visual. Let me, log in. So let me log in and show everyone before I go. Let's have a look. Web preview. Just got to log in. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen, and you can see our um, you can see our membership site here. Okay, there's our membership site. Now we've got quite a few stuff here, but let's have a look here. Australian property chat, freedom for property, freedom for property. Oh, I can't see it. Uh, uh, challenge. Can you see a challenge anywhere? It says challenge in the middle there, darling. In the middle. Right, here we go. Freedom for property. Okay, so if you look through here, right, <laughs> what you can do is you've got the welcome, all these videos here, right, and then, and I'll show, I'll play the little thing. I oh, think I've got, a little, I've got a little, I've got a little, uh, I mean, uh, animation, which I really. Turn it up. Welcome and congratulations for joining the Freedom for Can you hear it? Now, a little bit higher. This is called Freedom for Property. Um. The sound, know the sound's not as it's not really loud. I've got my oh, there we go. Creating okay. So, anyway, we've got all these. Um, so we've got the welcome, we've got all this. It gives you a percentage of what's complete. Then you've got so, pre training, you've got four lessons of pre training, 
you got week one, seven lessons. Week two, another seven lessons, rapid property acceleration. And then you've also got the graduation. Yep. You know, the thing is, the thing is, it's as much as it's a challenge, it's like a masterclass as well because you get little yes, snippets. Yes, it's a masterclass, uh, but also and, we've and got a Facebook group and you're live in the Facebook group. And this is the deal, guys. During the challenge, any questions you've got, I'm actually going to actually personally answer them. So sort them anyone out there that's thinking any questions... Because let, let's, say, let's, say, let's say you, 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 do, you do section, um, you know, when can you quit your job? And then you can you can message me and go, George, um, I think I can quit my job at, you know, 45. Is that true? And I'll just say, you know, yay or nay. I'll say, yeah, you can, sure. Or no, you can't, you know, whatever. Yeah, anyway, guys... Can I have a look of all the topic of the videos? Someone said. Um, yes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get um, our team to get the topic of all the videos and post them underneath this video tomorrow. That's a good idea. I might do a screenshot to send it to you because we've got quite a few topics and you're welcome to have a look at the topic of the videos. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, Bring it up. authentic and just showing you what we got and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, Christina's got the heater on and I'm boiling in here. It's like, oh, it's so hot. I'm just about to turn off my heater in here too. <laughs> <laughs> so, Belinda, you know, I, I wish you a happy lockdown. Thank you. You know, you're locked down, but you just got back from sunny Queensland. So, you know, you've had a bit of sun, which is great. So I hope um, I hope everyone in Victoria has, you know, hasn't got, you know, it's got a good lockdown. It's not too bad. I think, I think one of the things I need to say to Victorians out there, being a Victorian myself, is, you know what? There's opportunities out there. We're going through a lockdown. Get educated, whether it's property or anything you want to get involved in. You know, don't look at it as in, oh, damn, we're in lockdown. Go, hey, some more me time. No travelling. The time is safe, travelling to and from work. Um, you know, doing, we're, we're kind of a bit more isolated. Try and look at it as a way to kind of help yourself. Absolutely. So, guys, all in all, be kind to yourself wherever you are because it's all of you. And have a great day. Freedom fighters out there, keep fighting for freedom. We're going to create it. Remember, you're only one property portfolio away of the lifestyle you want, the family you want, the holidays you want, everything you want. Okay? So stay good. Love you all. See you later. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you for listening. I'm grateful for all our listeners around the world. If you found this podcast valuable, please share with someone that might find this useful. And please join our tribe of purpose-driven investors, increasing income and impact in our Facebook group, Positive Property. Please note, we have a multi-million dollar property portfolio and a passive income. I've become incredibly successful in investing in property. The fact of it is, however, many people may find investing in property challenging. It's not easy. And it takes a lot of hard work. However, becoming educated to make an informed decision and having the right advisors gives you the tools you need to succeed. The most important part of this formula, however, is to actually take action and apply that knowledge. It is important to understand the information I share is of a general nature only and is not taken into account your unique circumstances. If you're considering investing in any asset class, you need to seek the advice of an independent professional advisor who will be able to look at your specific situation. Be sure your advisor has actually achieved the kind of results you're seeking. Many won't have, so beware. We've taken great care putting those educational resources together. We'd be surprised if you didn't find any errors or omissions. If you do, our legal team says we have to say we're not responsible for those. In fact, as with all things, even your success, we're not responsible. That responsibility always has and always will come down to you and the actions you take. We're passionate about supporting you in that process and helping you increase your ability to create wealth, live the life you desire, provide all the things you dream of for you and your family.